job it performs. The job it performs, okay? Cases mean the job it performs. So now tell me what jobs the, you know, cases perform. Who wants to do that one? Okay. Nominative is the subject, genitive is possessive, dative is, dative is indirect object, accusative is direct object, and then um, ablative is two or four. Ablative is object of the preposition. Object of the preposition. Date, indirect object, dative is two or four. Okay. okay. So, but did anybody, while we're talking about cases, as you were doing your exercises, and I know you were using your grammar book, and then you got some prepositions. Did you get stuck at all when you'd look at that ablative case and you'd see by, with, from, and you didn't know how to make that fit in? Do you have my permission to just cross out by, with, from? Okay? You're, you'll use it sometimes, but it will usually be with a preposition. I mean, not always. We know that about Latin, right? But you're just not going to use those words when you have the ablative case. You're not going to use by, with, from. Okay? So if you wanted to take a pencil and sort of cross that out, that will help you. Maybe you didn't get, not everybody got stuck on that. Okay? But, but you could get stuck on that looking at the grammar book. Okay? Um, how do you know what declension a word belongs to? You already answered one. Somebody new who has an answer one. Okay. You look at the genitive singular. You look at the genitive singular, and that is your clue to what declension a word belongs to. Okay? Um, so what is your genitive singular of first declension? Okay, and how do you spell it? E. E. Excellent. How about second declension? E. e. And how do you spell that? Uh, you guys are doing great. Yes, I was a Macron. Okay. Now, what is the gender of first declension? Feminine. Mostly? Okay, would anybody like to share what natural gender rule is? Like the guy thing. <laughs> no. It's weird phrase. Okay. okay. Like, Sailor, that would be guy, first, masculine, feminine. Like Mary would be feminine. Okay, so it doesn't matter what declension a word belongs to, if it names a masculine or feminine being, it's natural gender, and that trumps all other gender rules. Okay, so, okay, second declension, genitive singular was the letter e. I, we say E. How do you know whether it's masculine or neuter? The nominative singular. Nominative singular. Excellent. So you had to go to the nominative singular. Masculine is what in second declension? U.S. U.S. And what about neuter? U.M. U.M. Um, Good. You guys are doing it great. It take me a while to figure that part out. Okay. So. Got through my questions. You guys are doing great. Okay. I'll take two questions right now if you have two questions from your homework. If anybody has a question... I have one. Okay. Let me sit. Well, well, remind me of your name. Oh, I'm sorry. Kathy. Kathy. Okay. While Kathy is getting her question, I want to say something Neva brought up to me, and that has to do with Latin word order. Okay. Is that going to be your question also? Yeah. On exercise 14, I kept putting them in the wrong. They, it's go they're going to be all over the place. Okay. So it doesn't matter what order your answer key puts the sentences in, if your endings are correct, your sentence is correct. <coughs> it's, it's, it's not going to be any, you know, usually we say the verbs at the end. But you're going to find never with our to be verb, that's going to be all over the place. And one of these sentences we're going to talk about in a minute about verbs, okay? You're going to find even that rule isn't hard fast, that the verbs at the end. Often the subject at the beginning, is that a hard and fast rule? Not particularly. Okay? We're going to start with prepositional phrases. We're going to, they'll start with things that they want to emphasize. Word order in Latin is not important. What's important? The ending. ending. Okay? So Good. I, what helped me is that I, I would put the subject and then I would stick the verb at the end. Yes. 
and write that, and then I fill in the middle. Yes. Yes. Is that okay? And that's, that's where I get it out of order. Was in the middle. And it's really and good that okay. you okay. go ahead and write the verb in, even though your sentence might have extra space in there. But then you don't forget the verb. Okay. That's okay. You know. Well, let's look at a couple on the board right now. Oh, you. Okay. I have a question. Sure. Um, there was something, and I can't find it. About it talking. Mm. It's a quay. Is that a word? It's yeah, it's a quay. I love the word it's a quay. Uh, it's a quay. Okay, it said that uh, it could begin a sentence. It, it, it's the word that begins a subordinating clause and it can't go at the beginning of a sentence. Uh huh. Um, but there was another word in that same paragraph that in English we could also use at the beginning of a sentence because it's starting a subordinating clause, but it's, it didn't mention that one. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? No. I'm not finding it. Anymore. Okay. So if you find it, come back if to I it. If I find it, I'll okay. Thank you. All right. Let's look at the board look at page 31. for just a second and talk about the first mm -hmm. sentence. How are we going to attack the first yeah. sentence? What are we going to look for first? Subject. Subject. What's your subject? <laughs> Days. Days, right? How did you know that? Because it's a nominative yeah. ending. Nominative so singular ending. ending. Good. Okay. So we got our subject. Then what do you go to next? The verb. Okay. We go to the verb. What's our verb? Did it. Okay, good. Now what do we look for next? Direct object. Direct object. So what's our direct object? Two. We've got two of them. Okay, tell us what they are, Jen. Uh, wrong and uh, sublime. Okay. So now how do we translate? Who would like to raise your hand if you want to translate that into English for us? Okay, Jack? God sees the land and the forest. Okay, God sees the land and forest. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's do the second sentence. What's our subject? No. 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 Okay. 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 Hold on a second. Okay. Did you want to say something? Well, that's if we're saying he. That's sometimes where I translate it with like sailor, and then I look, and it was supposed to be he, or or it's supposed to be he for God. Right. And how do you know? And how do you know I mean, you don't have a subject there? I think there? I figured it out, but it's not sticking. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's that ending. It's the yeah. ending. Yeah. The key is you got to right. look, and you always sort of look at the beginning because you hope that's your subject, and you, then you sort of look at the endings and you say, okay. can that be a oh. subject ending, nominative no. singular? Okay. It cannot. Okay. It cannot. Okay. We know it's what? Direct, direct, object. direct object. How about the next one? Because you know they can put the subject in the middle of the sentence. Can that be a direct uh, subject ending? No. no. So we got a direct object. Direct object. Direct object. So you have no subject. So if there's no separate subject, where do you go find one? In the verb. verb. In the verb. verb. It's implied, right? Okay. Implied in the verb. Oh, I couldn't see that. Okay. And you choose he, she, or it. What's going to make sense? Okay. This time, you know it's referring back to God. So it's going to be he. Okay. He sees what sailors, servants, and the Christians. The other thing is like this word here. We know two words for that, right? What? Slaves and servants. Okay. Now, you're probably going to fall on one of them. You know, naturally, you're going to pick one, whether it's servants or slaves, that you're going to use. But you have to know both, because, you know, when you're going from English to Latin, all of a sudden you'll get one of those words, and you'll be like, I don't know which one that is. So make sure in your vocab that you're learning both meanings. But you'll, you'll camp out at one of those. Okay, so let's talk about the next one. Okay, so we want to find the subject. So what's the subject? Okay. So Felicia doesn't see one here. Does anybody else see one? No. Okay. So then we, again, we go to they. Okay. NT. Remember they? All right. Um, so what do we do after we find a subject and we have the verb? What do we do next? The direct object. The direct object is which? It's not a, it's not a guessing game, right? <laughs> it has to do with what's in the accusative Gladios. case. Gladios, os, is accusative, plural, second declension, masculine, so you've got your direct object. Okay? So, what's this then? That's your indirect object. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
state of case, right, indirect object. Okay, now what is this said? Conjunction. Conjunction. Now you're going to have, but, but, okay, it means but, okay? So after a conjunction, and I don't mean a conjunction like this, you know, that just is connecting two words, but after a conjunction that's connecting two, just like in English, two clauses, we're going again and looking for a new subject, a new verb, new everything. Okay, so if you've got, and, and what's another word that you guys learned this week that's going to hold true? You learned another big, strong conjunction. Because. Because. Ha, what is that word? Quote. 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 Okay. Because we'll do the same thing. Then we're here. So now we've got to look for another subject. They again. A they. Still they. Good. And another direct object. Gladius. Okay. And then. Is the indirect object. Excellent. So who would like to translate that for yeah. us? Anybody? Okay, Felicia, go. They gave, they did not give the sword uh, to the servant, but they gave the sword to the sailor. Excellent. Okay, any questions? You guys are doing great. Super, super, super. I have one. Does it matter the order of the indirect object and direct object? No, it's going to be all over the place. I mean, in general, okay. the indirect object goes closer to, I mean, the direct object goes closer to the verb. Okay. Okay? Oh. It's just, but I hesitate even to say that oh. because there are just way too many exceptions in word order. Yeah. And so it's just better to just, like, take it oh. put this, try to put the subject at the beginning, try to put the verb at the end, okay. and let everything else. I will say, with my, I did A anyway, and we went verb first because then they would know if they were looking for the nominative singular or a nominative plural. plural. And that is that is a way to approach it, okay? And, and everybody's got to sort of, you know, and I think that's how you were starting. You would look at that also, you know. So you can definitely do start with going to the verb, seeing what you, if what you're looking for, okay? All right. So now, today, we are starting third declension, <laughs> okay? And you guys all already look like pains, okay? <laughs> so either you've, you've been working ahead in your book or somebody's told you that this <coughs> declension is a little bit problematic, okay? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> the good thing is, once you get through this declension, the next two are cinchy, okay? So, cinchy. Yeah. And I'm only giving you one lesson today, so that makes it a little bit, a little bit easier. Okay. So let me write some words up here. What do you notice about the nominative singular ending? It's everything. It's everything. We got an O, we got an X, we got an R, we got an S. Okay? So in third declension, we call that various. Okay? There is the nominative singular endings are going to be really various. various. Okay? That's the best way to say it. Okay? Now, what do you notice about the genitive singular endings? They're all if. So what do we know about third declension words? The genitive singular ends in I, F, if. Okay? Always. That's how you know. Remember, we, we worked on that rule that that's a third declension word. Okay? So, now, what else do you, just brainstorm a little. I know you're trying to write notes, but brainstorm a little bit. What else do you notice about any of these? doesn't come from the nominative. Okay. There's, there's no correlation between the nominative. There's not always a correlation between nominative and geminative stems, right? And do you remember how we find the stem? You drop the genitive singular ending. So I'm going to circle those real fast. And that leaves you your stem. 
And that's what you will decline the rest of your third declension on, okay? Super important in third declension. So when you're making your words and you're memorizing your words, you've got to learn both the nominative and the genitive. I know I said that last week, but it's crucial this week. There's no flying by in the seat of your pants on this time, okay? So, yes? Um, is there a, a real reason to learn the nominative? I mean, it looks to me like the genitive is the crucial one. That's what's important. Why do we learn the nominative? Oh, well, like you're going to see it all the time as a subject of the sentence. So you would need to know, you know, you would have to know the nominative because you're going to see it lots of times. Does that make sense? So like, for instance, and I think this is pretty true, as we go on in Latin, so say you only learned legis, legi, legam, legat. You didn't learn lex. When you encountered lex, you might not know what word that was. Does that make sense? Like in a sentence. So, so it's really, yeah, you have to know all your forms in order to be able to translate completely. But when you're learning your vocabulary, we memorize two mm -hmm. of the forms. Right, the nominative and the genitive. You have to I know would them both. recommend that you learn <coughs> ten of the forms because if you just learn the nominative and the oh. genitive, you won't know the rest of them. But if you know the nominative and the genitive, if you know your endings, you can figure right. out the rest of them. But I have to learn, I mean, I practice saying all no. ten of them to get them in my mind. If you only learned your genitive singular like in law there, mm -hmm. the second one, when you came across the nominative, and because if you're learning the second just in order to get the stem and figure everything out, you're going to have no idea what Lex is. And there's several others whose nominative yeah. bear no relation to but the But are dictionaries set up on the genitive? But you don't want to live in the dictionary. Yeah. That's a problem. It will take it, yeah. Yeah. We have okay. got to memorize our words. Remember what I talked about last week? You work on your forms, so you always make sure you know all your declensions, okay? And then we work on our vocab. Otherwise, we're spending so much time in the dictionary. And, and sure we do. I mean, there's times we forget a word and we've got to look it up. But your Latin exercises go so much faster if you have vocab right in your mind, yeah. in your forms. How do you say the L-E-G-I-S? Legis? Legis. Yeah. So it's not legis. Legis. Okay. And so G in classical is always going to be hard, and C in classical pronunciation is also always going to be hard. Okay. okay? Legis. Okay. So you guys got this, right? All right. So we've already talked a little bit. Okay. Let's, let's go ahead and decline Lex. Okay. So you don't know it. If you guys know it, right? So you can just do it with me. If you need to look in your book, I think it's page 10. Okay? So if you have to look, go ahead, because we want to do it right. And, and, and visually, that will help you. You see it, you say it, you write it. All those things will help you to learn your declension. Okay? You guys ready? Okay. Let, legis, legi, lego, lega. Legate, legum, legibus, legate, legibus. That, okay? Let's look at that for a second. Just look at your grammar book. I don't have it on the board right now. Okay? Hopefully if you're following us at home, you're looking at your grammar book right now. Do you notice anything? Is there anything you want to comment about this declension? Okay. Have you seen any of the endings before? Okay. Tell us which one you've seen before. Okay. You've seen I-S where? In the plural of the second. First and second, ablative, dative, and ablative plural are I-S. Okay? But those have macrons. This one doesn't. Okay? So there's a little bit. What else? What else? In the plural, the dative and the ablative match. No, okay. You haven't seen those endings before, but they match like the other ones. Th like, they also match. Ibis, ibis. It's going to match every declension, isn't it? So nice. Okay, anything else? Um. Um. But I don't know where it came from. Okay, where have we seen um before? <laughs> um. No. What? Plural. We, um. 
Oh, well, that's our room. So that whole ending is our room. Right, but it's still got the um. Yeah. Singular. Accusative singular second declension. Okay. How about that I dated and neuter? Yeah. Mhm. Mm Nominative singular. Okay. What about leggy? Right. We've seen sir, sir we. Right. So we've seen that long I. That tells you something really important. When you're learning these words, you need to know what declension they go with. Uh -huh. Or else, you might come up, like, so say you get, um, just in a sentence, leggy. If you don't know that third declension, you might think, oh, I've got a genitive singular, or, or I've got a genitive plural. Mm -hmm. So at, that's why we learn nominative and genitive, because that tells us what declension a word belongs to. Does that make sense? So that's just part of your memory work. It has okay. got There's to nothing be. Nothing magical, it's just that's nothing. how it is. Nothing. Okay. Yep. So, okay. Now, do you see right next door? Do you see in your grammar, you guys still have your grammar book open? Mm -hmm. Okay, right next door, you see pars. Do you see that? Okay, I want to talk about that briefly. Okay. Now, how many genders are there? Three. 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 What are they? Masculine, she, feminine, neuter. neuter. Masculine, feminine, neuter, he, she, it. Okay? Let works for masculine and feminine third declension. Okay? Pars also works for masculine and feminine of third declension. Okay? Now, I want to tell you, you're going to use Lex 90% of the time. Okay? You'll use this. Okay? The times you're going to use pars, okay, as a declension, and there's only one little thing that's different about pars, and that's a genitive plural. Okay? Somebody tell me what the genitive plural is. I-U-M. I-U-M. Okay? You'll use pars two times, okay? The first time is when the nominative and the genitive singular have the same number of syllables, okay? And we're going to go over this. I'm not leaving you hanging with just this. We'll go over this, okay? And the second time is when a one-syllable word ends in two consonants. Okay? And the only difference between these declensions... Nominative is on two, is the nominative singular, right? Nominative on, no, singular. The two, with the one singular word. Oh, thank you. The one syllable word, nominative singular, ends in two consonants. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're, we'll talk about that. I just want to get these rules down for you. So as we're looking at vocab in our lesson, you've got this. Okay, and remember, the only difference is the I-U-M and the genitive plural. Okay? Now, yeah. Um, for the pars, which, oh, never mind. I'm confused. Okay. And the feminine. Right, they're both, I haven't given you a neuter yet. Okay, we'll get the neuter in a little bit. But before we do that, and as you're writing, now, some of you kids, I want you to answer this. Because you, who's been through Latin if you're a student in here? Okay. Okay. Well, you know, we have some gender rules for third declension, right? Okay. Now, we, we remember our natural gender rule it trumps everything. But we have some gender rules. So, who can tell me what the gender rules are for third declension? Anybody? Do you remember? Anybody? Oh, uh, socks, something, and lanes. Good. Socks, something, and lanes. You know what that? Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. So look at these are really important words for you to remember. Okay. Socks. Error. And lancet. Okay. Basically, what that means is if the nominative singular, remember that's how we find gender, 
if the nominative singular ends in S, O, or X, the word is going to be feminine. If the nominative singular ends in ER or OR, it's going to be masculine. And if the nominative singular ends in L-A-N-C-E-T, what are, what are you left with? Neuter. Neuter, Neuter, right? Okay. Is that clear? Clear as day, right? It's clear as clear. So first declension is feminine, second declension is masculine and neuter, third declension is all three. Okay. Here's some general rules. Now, they're going to give you lots of exceptions. The exceptions are what you'll put on your card. Okay? So, like, you don't need to put down what gender these words belong to on your flashcards, except if it's an exception. Okay? Okay. So, let's look. Okay? So, I want you to turn in your, vo in your um, Henley book to page 36, everybody. That's okay? Right. Uh, purple book, page purple 36. Okay, I'm going around the table. Okay, so and it's remember, it's be free to be wrong here. Okay, we are all learning this together. So if you are correct, you will help everybody else. I'm just telling you that. Okay, so there's <coughs> don't feel bad. Robin, can I start with you? Okay. okay. Let's look at what gender do you think it is? Feminine. Feminine. And the X. Okay, next one. Rex, Regus. Masculine. Ah, excellent. Why did you choose masculine? Because it's king. Because it means a king. Okay, mm -hmm. natural gender rule trumps. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Ducks, Duckus. Masculine. Because it's leaders. No. Leaders. Leaders. Yeah. leaders. No leaders in the Romans leaders. were women. Okay? Yep. All right. Lux, Luckus. I, I would say neuter. But in English, wouldn't we think of that as neuter? Okay. You are right. So, but, but in Latin, we're not, we're not English. English. We're Roman. So it's feminine. It's feminine. It has an ends in that. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Homo hominis. Masculine. Because? It's, it's referring to a man. A man. Okay. Next one. Imperator, imperatoris. Masculine. Masculine. And that's that follows the rule and it names a masculine being. <laughs> okay, I'm heading back there. Veritas, veritatis. Feminine. Feminine. Truth Excellent. Feminine. Truth should be feminine. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, Cut that off. Why is it feminine? Oh, yeah. It ends in F. Oh. oh. Okay, so veritas ends in F. Okay, let's pop to page 39. Con, are you with us? Okay, what do you got? What? Kaiser, Kaiseress. Masculine. Masculine. Why do you think? Because Caesar was a man and there were no female Caesars. Excellent. Okay. Jack, we've got Salus, Salutis. Feminine. Why? Because the ends in S. Fox rule. Wax, Wacus. Feminine. Feminine. Okay, good. You got you see under there you got a new verb. Okay, auto wit. Okay, so keep track of that. Okay, turn to page forty two. Okay, Mrs. Morse, we're tut, we're tutus. I say feminine because it has an S. Has an S, excellent. Miles, militis? Uh, masculine. Masculine. Why? Soldier. Soldier, only man. Okay, next one, Pock, Pockus? Feminine. Feminine, good, as an X. Okay, how about this one? We are, we are. I tricked you, sorry. Oh gosh, that's a neuter because it ends with an A? Yeah, yeah. wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, this I is a trick. Sure it's a trick. Okay, I want you to look at the word and tell me what declension it belongs to. Okay. You look at the yeah. gender. Oh, that's a first, so it's feminine. Excellent. Okay, see how that trick came? You try to oh. trick your students like that too. Okay? All right. And then, how about this one? Populus, populi. 
What do you think? Let's first say what get messed. Okay. She's helping. You agreeing with her? It's your turn. Sure. Okay. Why? Tell them why. Because it ends in U.S. <coughs> okay. It ends in U.S. and it's what to clinch in? Second. Second, because genitive singular is the letter I. Okay. Excellent. Okay. We're not done. So did you say that one was masculine or neuter then? Okay. How do we know? It's masculine. It's masculine. It's masculine. <coughs> Because second declension, masculine ends in U.S. in the oh, nominative right. singular, it's and U.N. in the neuter. Okay. Good, good questions. Okay, back to you, page 46. This is really important to go over this. So we've got pars partis. 44. Oh, I'm sorry, that's page 44. So sorry. Okay. Feminine. You guys agree? Feminine? Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, I want to stop for a second right here. Do you see how it's a pars is a one-syllable word, correct? Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> Ending with two consonants. This will be declined like pars, obviously. It's the word pars. So genitive plural will be partia. Just want to point that out, okay? Let's look at the next one. Um, callus, callus. What do you got for me? <coughs> masculine, it has your ex. It has it. It's an exception. So that one you want to put on your. Okay, now, are we going to decline collis, collis, like lex or like pars? Lex. Pars. Oh, we got differing opinions. Uh -uh. What were our two rules for using pars? Same number of, con uh, same number of oh. syllables. Same number of syllables in the nominative singular and the genitive singular. So we're going to do the clap test, okay? Callus, callus. Do you see it's got the same number of syllables? So it's decline like pars. Okay? That, that's pretty clear. Okay? Can you give us that rule again? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I, wrote, I erased it so fast. Okay. So when you, so when you wrote lex and 90% of the time and pars and then the two rules, what that, that means is showing you which one you follow. Right. So, if if the word has the same number of syllables in the nominative and genitive singulars, then you use pars. So it's either either one or two. One or two. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Either or if it's you didn't understand that. Okay. Well, you, and you know what? There's a lot of remember. We're going so fast. You never go this fast in a regular Latin class. Okay. Keep that in mind. That's why you go home and you read the book thoroughly. I don't even cover everything. So if you're not reading the chapter, you're going to miss something. So make sure you read it really thoroughly. Okay? I just don't have enough time. I'm sorry. But we'll get here. Okay, look at the next word. Hostis, hostis. You're um, up. It's a masculine because in war, there was no one in the war. Okay, so the enemy was, was going to be masculine. Okay? Now, which one are we going to decline it like? Lex or pars? Think in your mind before he tells us. What no, do you no, think? I'd, I'd do this pars. You're right. Look. Hostis, hostis. Same number of syllables. Okay? Good. Okay. Gens, gentis. So first you want to tell me what gender. In the masculine. You wish. No. It's okay. feminine. It's feminine, but I would go, oh, tribes, men. Yeah, tribes have men, yeah, it's a feminine word. So I, yeah, and I'm because telling you what. Because the women would stay home in the tribe while the men went to war. Good, good idea. Yeah. So just write it in your book that that's feminine, because that could, just put a little yeah. F in parentheses so that you keep track of that for yourself right now, because I think that's, I had to do that when I was first learning it. Okay. Now, I want to know, are we declining like lex or like pars here, Mrs. Levin? I'd say pars, but I was wrong a while ago. No, so you're right, because it's a one-syllable word ending in two consonants, okay? Okay. Again, okay. N, S okay. is two consonants, one-syllable word, so it's declined like pars, okay? Okay, and those rules so the rule the is that we've just syllables. been over yes. four times is either it ends in two consonants 
or it's one or two syllables. Well, the syllables are the same number. So the nominative and the genitive are the same number of syllables. Nominative and genitive are the same number. And you'll read this. I promise you, you'll read this. So it'll you'll get clearer and clearer. Okay. Felicia. Rule 60 and 61. Is oh, rule 60 saying? and 61. Thank you. There you go. <coughs> yep, rule 60 and 61. Now. On page. Ten. 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 In your grammar book. Okay. Grammar book. Okay, Kai Days, Kai Dis, what do you got for me? Well, it would be feminine except for I'm thinking slaughter might be masculine. It's not. It's, it's not. feminine. It's feminine. Yep, okay. so that might be another one you might want to just make a little note in your book about. Okay. And what do you think it's going to be like? It's going to be defined as hard because it's the same number of syllables. Excellent. You got it. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. This is actually one of the trickiest things to so figure out. So all of these words were declined as pars? They were, yes. Okay? Even though 90% of the time you do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but they were introducing the conclusion <laughs> of par. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, let's look at page 47. Okay? And you still got your grammar book open, right? Because there's some exceptions. Okay? Okay, so remember, some exceptions have to do with mother, father, brother. So those people that you love the most are an exception to the oh, rule. Don't you give them exceptions all the time at home? So here you're giving them an exception too. So where did I end? Okay. So we've got frater, fratris. Masculine. Masculine because it means brother. And Okay. It's an exception I told you. So is it like lex or like pars? Lex. Um, no. Yeah. No, it's going to be like Lex because normally it would be father, father, but father, mother, brother are exceptions. They're special. Okay. Okay. So even though they have the same number of syllables and the nominative and genitive, those are all like Lex. Exactly. Okay. And they show you they're they're putting fratrum in parentheses to show you that's like genitive. S plural of Lex. Okay, Jack, you're up. Pater, patris. Gender? Masculine. What? Masculine. Masculine, and we're going to decline like? Lex. Lex, excellent. Mater, matris. Oh, I forgot Mrs. Anderson in the back. Um, that would be <coughs> feminine. Good. Like Lex. Excellent. Connor, mons, montis. I'd say masculine. And they tell you right there. <laughs> and that. So now you've got something to remember. Hills and mountains are masculine. Okay, those two geographical features are masculine. Okay? And which one are we going to decline it like? Lex or pars? Pars. Excellent. And then two consonants. Okay, Mrs. Edmondson. Clamor, clamoris? Um, it is masculine and you decline it like Lex. Excellent. Masculine because error. Okay, Mrs. Morse. Princeps, Principus. I guess it has to be masculine because it's a leading man. Yes. And since these are exceptions. Well, no, just the first three are exceptions. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Just so the first now three. I just have to figure it out. Okay, well, let's just do it. I'd say um, it's Lex because it doesn't have the same number of syllables. Right, and it's not a one syllable. Even though it ends in two consonants, it's not a one syllable word. Okay? You guys are rocking the house right now. Okay, turn to page 51. Are we not going to do... Did I miss one? Oh, it's a verb. I'm sorry. I'm skipping the verbs right now. Okay, so now remember your rules. Okay, we have this. This will be our model for third declension neuter. Flumen. 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 <coughs> Where did I... Have? What do you think it's going to be? Neuter. It ends in what letter? N. See that right here? End in N. It's neuter. Okay. What do you think it's going to be defined like? Lex, pars, or flumen? Flumen. We've got a new model. Oh. Okay. So look on page 11 of your grammar book. Okay. And now. Okay. 
page 11. Okay, just look at it a second. So, what do you notice about the endings of flumen? Somebody I'm going to write it up. Okay, flumen. In the pink, in the singular accusative, is N instead of M. It's the same. Nominative plural uh, instead of uh, a. Yeah. It's the same as lex, save the nominative accusative. Okay, so it's just like lex except for the nominative and accusative. Okay, that's very true. I'm <coughs> trying to write and think at the same time. It's sometimes hard. Okay, what else? What else you got? It's the same as lex except for nominative. And accuse of singular and plural. Okay? Anything else that you can make this a relation to something we've learned already before? Can I clarify something? Sure. The reason we have a new model is because this is new. That's exactly okay. right, Kathy. Okay. okay, we have flumen because now this is going to be the neuter. So if you have a neuter third declension noun, you're going to decline like flumen. Okay? And remember, this is a rule we learned last week when we were learning bellum. Nominative and accusative are always the same with neuter nouns. Okay? So if you look, since, and this is, this is, this is a little tricky as you get to translating. Since flumen is your nominative singular, it also has to come up. So it changes back from this root because it has to match. Do you see that? Nominative and accusative have to match in neuter nouns. Mm. Okay? Now, let's, does that true over here in plural? Flumina, flumina. Right? They have the same. That's just one of those rules. Neuter nouns, mm. nominative and accusative, whether they're singular or they're plural, have to match each other. The stem isn't the same, correct? Like where? Like if you take. If you take the genitive ending. Okay, we'll take the genitive off. Right? What's the I see F L U N I N. Did I do this wrong? Is that not what it is? No, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, so it's a stem change. Do you see that? It's a stem change. Oh, you started. I didn't think I was wrong. No, no, no. Why did I say it out loud? I just didn't know where you were. Okay, so she was just making an observation that, again, in the genitive singular, the stem change. Okay? And almost all of it is built on the stem from the genitive singular. Of course, except this one because it has to match mm -hmm. the nominative. So we went back to the original stem. Okay? It'll become clearer. And remember, when you did bellum, do you guys remember bellum plural had an A here also? Do you remember that? Bella, bellorum, bellis, bella, bellis. Okay, so here again, we have that A. So keep track. Often when you have that A, you've got neuter plurals. Okay? Not first declension. And so we you know that because we memorize it. You <coughs> memorize right? your words and you okay. know what declension the words fall into. Okay. That is so key. Okay. It really is. And that's what's really hard. <laughs> no, it helps everybody, Kathy. Okay. It's what's hard for students. If they don't know what the question of word belongs to, and then they're doing a sentence, mm -hmm. and they might come up to this word, and they might think that means one river. Because they'll think, it's, oh, hey, that's like terra. Mm -hmm. You see? But if they know that it's a third declension, then, they, oh, reverse, because I know that's got to be plural. Yep. Okay? Does that make sense how that works? That's why it's crucial. This is what so you have the stem the same in genitive, dative, and ablative, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. In both the singular and the plural. And uh, yeah, and in the plural, the stem is always the same. It's it it, it hasn't changed. See? Okay. So. Uh, so you really only have two out of the ten that are different, and right. that's in the singular. That's right. Okay. Okay? Yes. One more. Is third declension the only one that has changing steps? Yes. 
Okay. That's why I said we're going to come back next week. We're going to do fourth and fifth declension. You're going to next week is a breath of fresh air. Okay, it's just like night and day from this week. So put a, if you have time, put a lot more time in this week than than you might next week. Okay, um, let me just keep moving because I don't want to leave you guys hanging. Okay, um, yeah, let me. I want to talk about a positive for a second. Okay, does anybody remember from foundations what an appositive is? An appositive is a noun with pronoun directly besides another noun that, which explains or identifies it. How helpful is foundation? <laughs> yeah, wow. it is. That is exactly what an appositive is. Yes. Okay. And so if our students know that from foundations and they come in, because these sort of trick people up, like what? So it's a noun or pronoun directly beside another noun that explains or identifies it. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. Give an example. I am about to. Okay. Where are we in the book? Oh, um, yeah, we're actually going backwards. But let me just, I'll put this up, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Um, um, okay. So, remember, what's your subject? Your subject. What's your verb? La dot. La dot. What's your direct object? Uh, a. You. Okay, you stop answering questions. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. Okay, because we got to see other people might be having trouble. Okay, so we got subject, verb, direct object. That's how I always just do things. So now look at this word. Well, what case is that word in? Nominative, right? It's in a nominative case also. Okay, because it's a noun or pronoun directly beside another noun that explains or identifies <coughs> it. Okay, Christ is what? Son. Son. Do you see? Okay. The, the appositive is always in the same case as the noun it's explaining. This case, Christ is the subject, so it is the appositive will also be in the subject case. Okay? Does that make sense so far? And who can tell me what day he is? God. God. Of God. Okay. Excellent. Of God genitive. Okay? You look for those. Oh, you guys are doing great. Okay, let me give you another one. Okay? Okay, are we still doing neuter? No. no. We're, okay. we're, we're on to the positives right now. Okay. Sorry. Well, I was. Can we erase what's on the board up there? Thanks. You're welcome. Just makes me crazy. Okay. So how do we start? What are we looking for? At least in my class, what are we looking for? Subject. So what do you think? What's your subject? Christianity. Excellent. What's your verb? Does it agree? Yes. Plural? Yes. Plural. Yes. Okay, what's your direct object? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, good question. Okay, so your direct object in this case, Christo. Do you see how you're positive? is now in the same case because the word it's explaining is in the direct object case. So this is also in the accusative case. So who wants to try to translate this sentence? Jack? Christians praise Christ. Okay. Do you see what he got? The Christians, because this is how we always want to do it. The Christians praise Christ. Okay, now, who is Christ? The Son of God. This time our appositive is in the accusative case because Christ it has to agree in number and case, but not gender. Okay, so this these won't always be the same gender, but they'll always be the same case and the same number. And when I say number, I mean singular or plural. Okay? I don't know if you're 
know what I'm talking about when I say number, okay? So that's how a positive list works, okay? Um, did, um, did the Romans and the Latin, do they really have a rule with capitalizing like proper and common nouns? That's a good question. I could probably find out that. I guess it doesn't matter. In the answer sheet, I noticed that sometimes it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I know that they said that if if sky was capitalized okay, in heaven. Oh yeah. I that so I, I think I don't know if that's just Henley or if that's yeah. Latin, but I think in the text it definitely. Yeah, I kind of Henley. From reading that, I thought that was a Henley help. help. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do these two words mean? They is, is oh, okay. Uh, okay, are, are or is, is and they are. Oh, they are good. Or he, she is. He, she is. You know, I sort of do it like that. Is good. Okay, you guys are doing great. I hope you feel good about yourself. You know, that you are really accomplishing a lot. Because I know that you're probably spending a lot of time working on this. And so, but, but I, I read an article this week about how good a second language is for our brains. And so I really want you to take encouragement that the work that you're doing is really benefiting not only your students, but yourself. You know. Okay, so soot means they are. Okay, S means he, she, or it is. If you find these two words at the beginning of a sentence, okay, so say right here, you're going to translate it. Oh, I saw that. There I is. You. No, actually, this one will be, there are. there are, and then it's S. Did you already have this this week? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. But it didn't so explain. Did I explain this last week? No. no. no it's in it chapter three. three. No, it's it's oh, it's in chapter three. three. Yes. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. Oh, the second yes. class I did. Okay. So, okay. <coughs> but it, it may not teach it to a second grade, but it came into play in one of Okay. So it's the very first word. Oh, this reminds me of something else I want to tell you. It was in exercise 26. Okay, two. I'm so glad we're getting through the whole lesson. Uh, this makes me really happy. Okay, so I want you to take a minute and try to translate this and write it down somewhere and see what you come up with. And don't blurt it out. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. I'm going to get a drink for a second. Pericula and Gallia. Okay, these are words you have all these words already, so it's not even a new word this week up here. Okay. Everybody, can I call for a who who's, who thinks they know what this means? Okay. okay, think to yourself. Okay, Neva? Say that loud. Sure. There are dangers in Gaul. What do you guys? Yeah. Anybody think she's wrong? There should be an E, I guess. Oh, that's interesting. If it were that, it She thinks there should be an E, so we got to talk about this. Okay, curricula, the, the answer is there are dangers in Gaul, and she's right because what kind of word is, okay, let me write down, periculum, periculi. What kind of word is that? What's the clenching? Second. 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 Neuter. 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 Yeah. And we remember, we talked about the same. Neuter words in the plural, this is what I was saying. Oh. So it's like Bella. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. It's like Bella. We have to know where our words fall. That's the only way. And this is one that will get your students all the time. They look at that, there's a danger. But, the, you know, anyway. But that, re okay, so perfect. There are dangers in golf. But I want to talk about this also. Yes. But don't, doesn't uh, curricula also have to match in number to students? Yes. So you instantly know that that's more than one. Yep. If this is plural, then this has to be plural. Okay, okay so Heather, I just to think it through. So what were you saying that I was, was in play? Okay, I was thinking... I was thinking it was a typo. I thought this was first-declension-nominative because I knew, I knew that had to be the subject and it ends in off, so I was assuming that it was a first-declension because I was wrong because I haven't memorized okay. it. 
So as we memorize, we, we get, okay, Mrs. Anderson? Why is there no macron over the A in Gallia? Is it not an object of a preposition? There you go, right there. Thank you. Is it backward? Is it like I know. Um, <laughs> is it okay? Sorry. Like right now, we can't. See. This is Realize a really important wrong. one. Oh, it is. When you, yeah, it's really important. Ablative singular for sequential. It's really, really important to have that mask on. Okay. So yes, you're right. Thank you. But is I do want to also so tell you know it's not denominative. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. It's to distinguish it from the right. Ah versus ah. Uh. Okay. Now, the, the people. I gotta wrap this class up. So what I want to say though is about this word, because you also have you have two words here. You have galia, galiai, and you have galas, galis. Am I correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need you to think about this. Places are feminine, okay? Places are going to be in the first declension. People, remember the Romans, who are the people to the Romans? The men. So think about the people being masculine. Okay, so when you're looking at your endings, you gotta, when you get either of these words, and the same will be Roma, Romai, and Romanus, Romanorum, or Romani, same thing, okay? The places are feminine. So, and I'm sure you've already run into this this week. We did it. Um, place has an A and an E in it, like the first one. And I am a person, like the second one. Okay. I am a person. That was my little kid's okay. trick. Okay. Oh, wait. So the first oh, one is yeah. gall, like the place. place. And place like has an gall. A and an E in it. And these are the galls. Mm -hmm. and those or are the people. gall one. But this is the place. Uh, Okay, and that can be very, very tricky. Because they're in separate declensions. They are, because places are feminine and people are masculine. Okay, general groups of people. Anyway, we gotta, you remember, you're gonna read your book, so you'll catch whatever I missed. Okay, if, if I, I, I might have missed, I try not to. And we'll see you next week. Okay? Next week, we'll find it. Oh, you do lesson three. All of lesson three this week. What will you be covering next week? Oh, lesson four and five. Four and five. Okay. Okay. If you want to, okay, go ahead. Let's let's shut this off. Okay.